Well, hey everybody, Coach Gary, Mike Colonna here. Welcome to Best Video Web Marketing with Coach Gary. I have a special guest for you today, Patty Lucas, and she is involved with her business, I should say, is involved with thermal imaging or thermography. Um, if, if there's a, a few different uh, terms for it, infrared thermal imaging, that kind of a thing. And so excited to have Patty here, and she's going to talk a little bit about uh, what what that's all about, and how that helps uh, you, uh, your family, how it can help, um, surprisingly, horses. So you're not going to get that anywhere else, trust me. So without having that further ado, Patty, welcome to my blab. Well, thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me here today. Well, it's uh, it's this is this is really cool. Glad that you're here. So, um, <laughs> let's let's start out with the real basic thing here. All right. So, uh, what what exactly is thermal imaging or thermography, Patty? Well, I like to put it in some layman's terms because I get that question a lot. You know, I, what do you do? I do thermal imaging. Wow, what's that? Or I think I've heard of that. Well, you know, you have heard of it or you've seen it in using uh, the government's used it or for night vision or for you've heard of people having leaks and maybe finding leak detection or you've been maybe familiar. The biggest one I think of is the weather channel and you see all the colors. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll get the response. Oh, OK. Yeah. But how can that help somebody in medical imaging because that's where this technology is with highly advanced medical technology for determining different it's different than say x-rays or uh, sorry about that it's different from x-rays or ma mammograms or cat scans and all it's a different modality and it's looking at our physiology so and it's looking at us against ourselves really and it's showing in a in a converting the heat from our bodies it's given off by our i'll just say regulated by the brain things that you aren't aren't controlling and it's giving off the different organs will say there should be cooler warmer whatever in a in a color spectrum and it's putting it in a format where we can read it uh, by turning it into color so the heat is being read by the infrared camera and putting it into colors and highly uh, trained doctors are then reading those images so when you read the images, you're saying, well, what is it? Is, you know, what's, what's, is it really scary if I see white or red or sometimes, sometimes not. So the, you know, I'm, I'm trained in taking really good pictures and then I send off the report to the doctor. They give a report back. Sometimes something should be very warm. If you're in the, in the corners of your eyes, for example, you say, oh my goodness, what's wrong with that? You don't worry about it because that's a very normal thing, a very bony area, very, it should be white there. There are areas that maybe um, symmetrically we'll look at it and we'll look up, you know, um, uh, sorry, we'll look up both sides of your body and we'll compare side to side. And the idea is we're looking for the root cause of something, not mm -hmm. just a static place. So when you get, you know, some of these other tests, you might see in a mammogram an area of a mass, but you don't know what it is. You can't tell if it's inflammatory, if it's active, if it's not. Um, you know, where, you know, a, a lot of different things like that. So this technology can see something growing far before a mammogram can pick it up at a time when you can actually turn that around, hopefully, and have the body take care of it and it goes away before it comes into a big problem. Excuse me. Uh, so I'm not sure. No, I got yeah, distracted awesome. here. Sorry, so Gary. Like um, but anyway, so what is thermal imaging? So it's taking it's taking images of the body, putting it into a thermal image, a heat image, into color, so that doctors can thereby interpret the image and see what's going on inside of inside of your body or on the skin. It, it just depends. Okay, so does sure. that make so, sense? So if uh, let's let's talk about um, you have two big applications. One would be for horses, and one's for humans. So let's say, for instance, on a horse. If you're scanning the horse, if you take a, an image of the, the, let's say the horse's four legs, the front legs, you might see a difference between the left leg and the right leg, and that's really the value of the of of thermography is seeing an, an anomaly. Both both should theoretically look right. pretty much alike, and if they don't, right, they should be. You'll have an, and in a human body or in a horse, you'll have a thumbprint, so to speak, maybe slight variability, but not very much. It's a very very small variability. Uh, that should be there. And when it you compare side to side and one side is extremely different than the other, it'll show an anomaly or it'll show a difference mm -hmm. in the doctors and interpret which 
you know, what is going on there or as best to their knowledge or that this is there for the pinpoint of the issue. For a horse, for example, uh, they might walk around and be lame and you can't tell where it is. They, you know, well, it looks like it's in the back leg, the front leg, mm -hmm. the back, the, the head. We're not really sure. There's a problem everywhere. Um, thermal imaging can eliminate a lot of time a lot of money in tests that aren't necessary and that are very invasive to the horse, getting into the joints with blocking issues with nerves. The thermal image can pick up a problem and say, well, this is where it is. I see the issue is in, you know, in the shoulder of the horse or in the hind end of the horse or in the foot of the horse. Um, and, it, and it can point the, the vet into the right position to begin his work and then they're continuing on to their um, investigation well, as to what the problem is. Well, that would be great is. because um, since animals obviously are not talking to us, they, they can't tell us where it's hurting, but you, so this is a way, this is sort of like a sixth sense almost that you can see where it is the animal might be hurting. It is. We just, I just did recently a horse. Um, it was at the Philadelphia racetrack, for example. I just did a, did two horses there. Actually, one happened because I did the first horse. And the problem there was they had, had a lot of blood tests, a lot of things had gone on. The vet was pointing the finger at the trainer. The trainer was pointing a finger. Everybody had their fingers pointing at somebody else involved with the horse. And the horse was just not, uh, was, it was young and it was not running probably was limping all over the place but then it wouldn't so i came in and i did a thermal image and there were literally problems all over the horse mostly in its joints different things it had just the answer that came out of the report was it's too young send it back to pasture it was not ready to be going undergoing all of the the rigorous training that it was going on so it wasn't well actually the in this case the feet were unbalanced and the dental issues hadn't been corrected and they did end up getting a new equine dentist wow. for the horse and they did get a new farrier for the horse because the other horse i then did had the same problems in those two areas same farrier same equine dentist and they had just been done so they they located that but other than that they said you know it isn't anyone's problem the horse is just not growing yet it's not enough it's not ready they put it out to pasture it's growing like mad. It did its next growth spur. It's healing. And then I'm going to re-image the horse before it goes back to training and say it's ready to roll. So, you know, it's they're going to put it through what they're going to on the track. But they wanted the, this horse was really high bred, as most of them would be there. And they're like, what the heck? So thermal imaging said there are so many things going on here. You need to stop. You know, then the other horse ended up having a surgical procedure done, which uh, was their option to do or not based mm -hmm. on the thermal findings. So you just don't know what it might find. And the horse can't speak, you know, and they hide things a lot. So you may, it might have a problem two weeks before you, you know, it goes out to do a competition and it never let you know until two weeks later. And now you're down at the, at the track or you're, you're not doing well at the show or you have an injury that you could have avoided. So. Um, it's a great tool to find out and locate problems prior to when the horse either may or may not be exhibiting it or it is and you can't figure out what the problem is. I would is. think too, um, since I, I, I do know that um, you can you can have, have do a very limited kind of an infrared scan where you're just looking at the horse's hooves or legs or something, or you can do a full body scan. But I'm, I'm guessing that uh, if doing the whole the full body scan, you're going to have a much better idea what might be the root cause. I mean, you may look at the horse because he's he's acting limp on you know one of his legs, but that not, might not be the be the issue. And, and yeah, it's <laughs> right. That can oftentimes be a consequence of another issue. And so the horse is limping in this this side, you know, and it it's not even the problem where the horse, but it'll become a problem yeah. <laughs> because then it's going to be sore as well. The same with people, you know, I'll say to them when they're coming in for, oh, well, I just want to do a breast scan, you know, and that's great. We want to do that. But what can happen is it isn't just the breast that you have. And so why did it happen? That's my question. You know, let's do a full body first and then make sure that we've seen everything. What could be contributing to an issue in the breast? Was it periodontal disease? You don't know that there an x-ray. I cannot find it. Is it something in the gut that's that you know you've been complaining to me as you've been standing here you're you know you're burping maybe there's a problem there and things are backing up like clogged up drain <laughs> if we don't find those root causes you know a you can take care of the problem that they found in the breast but it's going to find itself somewhere else if you don't locate it so i always like to say look the first time it's worth your investment get a full body scan if you don't have any issues anywhere, we don't need to be following them. Maybe every other year you get one of them, but follow the problems that you do have. But I think that's just, it's the most healthy thing you can do with no radiation to find out, you know, hey, how am I? Do I have peace of mind that I, I thought I was great? I am great. Or, you know, how, have you ever gone to a chiropractor and you say, oh, no, you know, I really, someone told me to come, but I'm really fine. And then you see your back and, you, and your, you know, your bones are 
Uh -huh. whacked out and you think oh my gosh yeah, I, do, I am I actually thought I do have problems <laughs> you know wouldn't you have wanted to know it sooner and correct well, it this, sooner the younger we are the more time we have to correct it and turn our this sounds around. almost like science fiction so is this brand new technology or how long has it been around no it's been around for a number of years the technology however has has actually advanced to a point where the medical establishment is actually taking a better look at it and in Europe they did uh, we are under unfortunately some regulations or get regulated in ways that I don't think we should and it's a way of helping people get better without going on drugs and without doing some of these other tests of course it's not a big money maker it's a money out of your pocket to do it but you save money in the long run because you're not ending up down a different road it's been around uh, even when mammograms came out ultrasound so did thermography but and they were kind of compared and they just went with one mode over another so uh the technology's advanced considerably well, you know, speaking of ma uh, mammography i just i mean right out of today's news literally there's um the FDA said that uh, they're, they're changing their position on, on how often a woman should have a mammogram because of the radiation issues. So is there any kind of radiation that comes with thermal imaging? Absolutely not. I can do babies 100 wow. times a day. It's just like taking a picture. There's no radiation. There's no compression. There's, it's absolutely pain-free. It's very quick and easy. It's just like taking your picture, only you're seeing seeing it different than you would an actual photo. Um, so no. Pain so you free. get a report from this then, and and the, the report I think you said earlier it, it's read by a trained doctor, so you know what, what. Okay. Yes, it is. These doctors done over over a million scans. The doctor that I choose to send it to, uh, there are other doctors who are now also trained to be able to send thermographies uh, reports to. So I'll send the images along with uh, the notes and the port, you know what I've found during my visit with the patient. Then the doctor comes back with a report of findings and recommendations as well. That's all included in your fee when you get your thermography testing done or your, you know, your images taken. You also get a report and then I can go over that with you or so can the doctor for a minor fee and we can go over exactly what you should or could do to, to improve the situation and then follow it with a spot scan afterwards, three months, six months down the road, whatever the recommendations are to make sure that what we do recommend to you, if you're following those protocols, that are, they're working. Sometimes people say, well, I don't really know if I feel any different, but we can see it on thermal imaging that you are feeling different and it's encouraging. So then you say, you know, that's great. I'm going to continue. Or and I haven't seen a case yet where it's actually reverted the other way unless the patient has not followed the protocol. But so you follow the protocol, you come back and you, um, you know, you see you're, you're maybe not doing so well. Maybe it was an inflammatory mm -hmm. situation and it's really taking a turn for the worse. They are the first on the you know, on the bandwagon to say it's time to go get an ultrasound or whatever the next step would be. They're not just going to say, oh, we know everything. It's it's a helpful tool to keep you healthy and point you in the right directions and get further testing. So, so with the two different uh, uh, species, I guess we'd say humans and horses. So um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing that um, where, whereas you probably do the the human scans in some some kind of a doctor's office, you probably don't have a horse go in there that you 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 do that separately so so how, how does if, uh, for instance now so if someone wanted a, a scan with you whether it be human or or or, or equine they would what call your office and then and either you're going to go out to them if they have a horse or you're going to invite them to a doctor's office if it's a, if it's a, a a clinical kind of scan right right if it's a clinical scan i have an office where the patients can come Sometimes at a different office, uh, different doctor's office, if I'm working in there, in their office, but it is in an office setting and it's a definite um, 68 to 72 degree controlled environment, very important for medical imaging. Um, the horses, animals, it could be cows, pigs, all sorts of animals, um, alpacas, you know, dogs, I go to the animal. So there's no, it, it reduces the stress on the animal. You know, you take a horse and you put it on a trailer and it's jarred around in its legs and then it gets off and it's stressed out and it's all these different things. What do you think you're going to see in the horse? If we're looking at heat, it's going to be heated up. So the idea is to keep it as stress-free in its natural environment as you can. I'll go wherever it's most comfortable. If it's in the stall, however I can get the images as long as it's following the rules that I need to follow as an imager. Um, and I definitely go out on the road. That's why the camera that I have suits both applications. Sometimes you can do you can do equine thermography with a different um, 
camera, but you can't you can't use that camera necessarily for or shouldn't be using it for medical imaging. There's strict re requirements for that. So my camera is portable, so I can do it in either office or on the site, and it matches. It meets up both standards. Okay, terrific. So I, probably the way we should leave this is because uh, I, I think you have a wealth of information there. So we could invite someone to uh, call your office if they wanted to set up either either set up an appointment for whichever species we're talking about or to get information. And uh, so we'll we'll put that on the uh, uh, on the YouTube video that will I'll have that in the description. But if you want to go ahead now and, and give out a phone number for your office, why don't you go ahead and do that? Go ahead. OK, my phone number where you can reach me is 610-888-2807. And that is an Elvert, that's 610-888-2807. And that actually, that is an office, uh, that's uh, my portable phone, and my office is in Elverson, Pennsylvania, and I can travel anywhere in the eastern Pennsylvania region. Okay, terrific. Well, Patty, thank you so much for being here. I learned a lot. I'm glad you were, you were with us, and uh, we should do this again. What do you say? <laughs> I'll do it All again. All right, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Thanks again now. Bye-bye.